Item number SCP-1075 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Adjunct Site-13 is to be utilized for direct monitoring of SCP-1075-1. The property containing SCP-1075-1 has been purchased by Southern Cross Cut Pines. The property is to be surrounded by fencing to prevent unauthorized entry. Foundation agents located in adjunct site 13 are to patrol the fence perimeter regularly for unauthorized individuals. Any unauthorized individuals are to be removed from the property immediately. Under no circumstances are individual trees considered part of SCP-1075-1 by local residents to be damaged by Foundation activities. Moral Task Force Theta-29, Michael Palins, are to be utilized to manipulate public opinion of SCP-1075-1 in the local community. See document Lambda-4 for more details. Description SCP-1075 is an anomalous psychological effect which is extant among permanent residents of Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Those subject to SCP-1075's effect believe a global colony of 493 trees belonging to the species Populus Tumulodus and which are designated SCP-1075-1. As a human resident of Pagosa Springs, Colorado, SCP-1075-1, referred to by local residents as Vince, does not appear to itself be anomalous. SCP-1075-1 was, prior to Foundation intervention, believed by sufferers of SCP-1075 to be a well-respected member of the Pagosa Springs community. It was listed as a member of the Town Council, considered active in local charitable organizations, and a focus of romantic interest for several female and at least one male resident. Due to Foundation efforts outlined in Document Lambda 4, newly formed anonymous memories of SCP-1075-1 appear to be focused on avoidance of the individual. Those suffering from the effects of SCP-1075 are unable to be swayed from the belief that SCP-1075-1 is a human individual. The majority of long-time residents are able to recall detailed and intricate memories relating to interactions with SCP-1075-1. Furthermore, the County Register's Office, along with several other local organizations, have several official documents on file relating to SCP-1075-1. The following is a list of permanent extent documents. A birth certificate dated to February 10th of the year 201 AD. A driver license. Note, the printed spelling of Espenson appears to contain an error. This spelling does not match the signed spelling, nor the spelling of any other documents. A marriage certificate between Vince Espenson and an individual known as Elizabeth Espenson, Ni Abereda. Court documents relating to the forced settlement with Elizabeth Espenson, Ni Abereda. A high school diploma. A bachelor's degree in astronomy. A property deed in Vincent Espenson's name for the land currently occupied by SCP-1075-1. Several police reports. See document number 4. Elizabeth Aberretta interview. Elizabeth Aberretta was located shortly after SCP-1075's original containment. Though Miss Aberretta had no memory of SCP-1075-1, an attempt was made to change her legally registered address to inside the Grosser Springs city limits for the duration of this interview. Despite being conducted outside of SCP-1075's normal area of effect, this was sufficient to affect the temporary restoration of Miss Aberretta's false memories of SCP-1075-1. This interview was conducted under the guise of a security clearance background check. Elizabeth Aberretta did not attempt to contact SCP-1075-1 following the interview. Date, October 18th, 2012. Interviewer, Agent Malcolm. 
Subject: Elizabeth Alberetta. Location: Elizabeth Alberetta's domicile. What was Mr. Epsonson doing at Greendale before you met? You know, at first he couldn't even talk to me. He was supposed to be here for transfer credits, but he told me he didn't learn anything from Greendale except how to talk to girls. How did you meet him? Back in 1998, and we were both taking Spanish. It was an easy credit for me since my grandmother was from Mexico. Vincent was in way over his head, though. I was tutoring him. One thing led to another, and you know. Why did you decide to get married? That—that that was all him. We were young and stupid. We made a lot of well, a lot of mistakes. What do you mean? We were only dating for a couple of months when I got pregnant. He told me he loved me, but I think he was just trying to do the right thing. What happened? He had me meet his parents, and we got married that weekend. That was fast, but because the spring is beautiful in the spring, we don't have any records of a child. He was born in Denver at UC Hospital. They should have his records. What was his name? Joshua. Vincent picked it out. Said it was because he was Vincent's salvation. At this point, Miss Alberetta begins to have an emotional episode. It takes several minutes for her to recover enough to continue. I'm sorry. I thought I put it all behind me. It's fine, Miss Alberetta. What happened? Joshua was born with neoplastoma. I. I didn't even know a baby could be born with cancer. Did he survive? At this point, Miss Alberetta lost her composure again. Per standard protocol, Agent Malcolm changed the topic of conversation in order to maximize the information gathered from the interview. What happened、uh, after that? I didn't think I could ever get over it, but eventually, I guess I did. I think Vincent actually loved me. He just—he was broken after that, and I couldn't help him. So you got a divorce. I felt horrible. He retreated into himself. He almost quit school. But I told him the same thing he told me when I got pregnant. It's our future as much as the kids. If you love him, you'll keep trying to better yourself. And then. I guess he replaced me with schoolwork. He didn't even show up for the hearing. I had to courier him the papers to sign. He lost a son, but I lost two people I cared about that day. When was the last time you talked to him? It was a couple of years after that. I、uh, I called him about his parents. The funeral was. It was spring. Why didn't you try to talk to him after that? I honestly don't know. I feel like maybe. I think I reminded him too much of the past. I didn't want to hurt him any more. Thank you for your time, Miss Alberetta. I appreciate your candor. How is he doing anyway? He's actually getting married again. Note: While this is untrue. It was deemed the best response to eliminate the possibility of Miss Alberetta contacting SCP-1075-1 if the anonymous memories could not be eliminated. Oh, okay, that's great. Following this interview, Miss Alberetta's legal residence was switched back to her previous address, resulting in the elimination of all memories relating to SCP-1075-1. No records relating to Joshua Alberetta. Exist in the University of Colorado Medical Archives. Our Greendale City College has extensive records relating to Miss Alberetta. No records of SCP-1075-1 exist. Land of Four documents. Due to SCP-1075-1's popularity among SCP-1075 sufferers, early Foundation containment efforts were focused. On the reversal of this public opinion to limit the spread of public knowledge of SCP-1075-1, due to Pagosa Springs regular tourism, several Foundation assets posing as tourist filed asset claims against SCP-1075-1. 
Some of the first few accusations were improperly addressed. Local law enforcement began to take the issue more seriously as accusations mounted. On March 8, 2013, law enforcement officers traveled to SCP-1075-1 listed address and remained inside the car for 24 minutes. Following this, the officers reported that SCP-1075-1 was in custody and traveled to the local police station. Though this event appeared to be peaceful, charges of resisting arrest were included in the original indictment. The case began to move through the local criminal justice system without any observable events. The eventual plea bargain agreement reduced all charges to aggravated assault. SCP-1075-1 received a six-month suspended sentence, along with six months and one day of house arrest. The current local opinion of SCP-1075-1 is to be monitored if any return to previous popularity appears in newly formed memories of SCP-1075-1, more drastic measures are authorized. Following the success of Operation Number 4, several follow-up interviews were conducted with local residents, all but one individual appeared to have their opinions significantly altered by Operation Lambda 4. The following interview with that individual is included for reference. Date, April 25th, 2013. Interviewer, Agent Stevens. Subject, Jennifer Small. Location, The Great Cheese Diner in Progressive Springs. Thank you for sitting down with me. No problem. My dad used to get a son. Note, for these interviews, Agent Stevens posed as a reporter for the Progressive Springs Sun. When I was a kid, I would be so happy to see my name in it. Well, I'm actually doing a story on Aspenson. Oh. I don't think I want to talk about that. What's wrong? It's just, I've known Vince since high school. He was a straight A student. And even though he got an astronomy degree, he was loving it teaching high school physics. He said he wanted to give back to the community. So the accusations hit you pretty hard. I mean, I feel like I know him. Like, really know him, you know? He's such a gentle soul. I just can't believe he would hurt those people. There were 12 different incidents. They can't all be lying. Maybe they are. Vince would never do the things they said he did. What about the guy from Boulder? He was stuck in a hospital for a week. You're right. I know you're right. But he says he didn't do it. What does he say happened? Can this not go on in the paper? Sure, we'll talk off the record. He says he's been framed. He says there's these guys up near his house that are trying to make him look like a monster. It doesn't sound like he's doing all right. He's not. He's falling apart. He thinks there are people out to get him around every corner. What do you think? I think maybe he's not well. I think he needs help, and he's not going to get it if they're treating him like a criminal. I could put that in the article if you want. No, I don't think I want to add anything to the article. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. I'm sorry to bother you. No, it's... You're not bothering me, but he said some stuff that makes me wonder. Can you... Can you possibly look into something for me? See if what he's saying holds any water. I can try. He says he's been inside a building the people trying to frame him have put up on his property. He says there's proof that he's telling the truth. I... I can look into that. Yeah. He say what it was, just that it was on his property. Go talk to him, and he can take you right to it. I will do that then. Thank you so much. I care about him a lot. We never quite click, but... But I miss the old him. I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks for sitting down with me. Thank you so much. Following this interview, Foundation agents wrote a property to Jennifer Small in Maine through a distant relative. Due to the size of the inheritance, Small moved away from Percosa Springs. Further interviews indicate she is now free of the effects of SCP-1075. It is believed 
There are no longer any SCP-1075 sufferers currently sympathetic to SCP-1075-1.